We begin the show in the United States, where Ron DeSantis has pulled out of the Republican presidential race. Let's hear it from the man himself. I am today suspending my campaign. I'm proud to have delivered on 100% of my promises, and I will not stop now. It's clear to me that a majority of Republican primary voters want to give Donald Trump another chance. They watch his presidency get stymied by relentless resistance, and they see Democrats using lawfare this day to attack him. Well, I've had disagreements with Donald Trump, such as on the coronavirus pandemic and his elevation of Anthony Fauci. Trump is superior to the current incumbent, Joe Biden. That is clear. I signed a pledge to support the Republican nominee, and I will honor that pledge. He has my endorsement because we can't go back to the old Republican guard of yesteryear, a repackage formed of warmed over corporatism that Nikki Haley represents. Well, listening to that was Washington-based reporter Simon Marks, who's on the line. Simon, DeSantis' campaign has finally hit the buffers, but it didn't start well either. Can you talk us through his bid to be the nominee? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it hit the buffers, in fact, quite a while ago, but DeSantis is finally recognising, publicly at least, that it has hit the buffers and that it was time uh, to call it quits. When Ron DeSantis initially dipped his toes into presidential waters, Republicans were certainly interested in him. Uh, he had, of course, led this anti-woke crusade in Florida uh, that he was proposing to go national with, uh, and many observers thought it was possible that he was going to be able to build a national presidential campaign based on many of those achievements and the ideological approach that he had taken uh, down in the Sunshine State. But the minute he started campaigning, the minute he actually started connecting with voters outside Florida, Florida, the more apparent it became that he simply didn't have the personality that was going to draw people uh, into his orbit. And it didn't take long before Donald Trump was relentlessly attacking him, constantly calling uh, Ron DeSantis by the nickname Ron De Sanctimonious. I mean, he has been on the receiving end of a withering assault by the Trump campaign uh, in its now successful bid to neutralise him. But there's no question that Ron DeSantis aided that bid because when Republicans in places like Iowa and New Hampshire took a close-up look at him, they just didn't warm to him. And indeed, I think it's fair to say that he appeared more relaxed and happier in that appearance on video yesterday when he terminated his presidential campaign than he had seemed at any time on the campaign trail itself. Now, during that speech, he hardly gave a ringing endorsement uh, to Trump. I mean, the two have had a very adversarial relationship. He talked about lawfare. And I wonder why Trump's opponents for the nomination don't lean more into his trouble with the law. I mean, they could be asking potential voters, why would they want to, to give their vote to a criminal? But that seems to be largely ignored. Yeah, absolutely. Largely ignored, except by people like the former presidential aspirant Chris Christie, the former governor of New Jersey, who did relentlessly go after Donald Trump. But people like Ron DeSantis uh, and Nikki Haley, the former governor of South Carolina, who of course now remains in the race, have faced this, uh, what they viewed as, very, very difficult conundrum. Donald Trump's dominance in the field nationally, his dominance within the Republican Party is so great that they needed to try Try and thread the needle and find a way of peeling votes away from Donald Trump without dramatically offending Donald Trump's core constituency. Because whoever wins the Republican Party's presidential nomination ultimately is going to have to come to terms with Donald Trump's core constituency because you cannot possibly win the presidency without their support. And that led Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley both uh, to hold back considerably in terms of trying to to protect their ultimate viability with Trump's base when many strategists would have argued you really needed to go much heavier against Trump in the first place. Mm. What are the latest polling figures showing? Has Nikki Haley picked up of any of DeSantis's voters? I have to say it's pretty grim for Nikki Haley as we are entering the eve of the New Hampshire primary. If anything, uh, over the last two or three days, Donald Trump has uh, added to his lead against her in the poll of polls that is uh, published by the political website 538. Trump goes into this primary contest with 49.8% of the vote. Uh, Nikki Haley, 36.1%. Now, Ron DeSantis had about 6% of the vote, but we can assume that most 
most of those supporters are either going to stay home or hew to Donald Trump, as Ron DeSantis has indicated that they should. So Nikki Haley finds herself on the eve of a drubbing in New Hampshire, and she's going to have to make a very big decision when she places second behind Donald Trump in the Granite State, because the next date in the diary that she faces, if she stays in the contest, will be in her home state of South Carolina, where Donald Trump currently enjoys a more than 40 percentage point lead over her and most observers think it is unlikely that she will want to end her presidential career with a drubbing in her own home state. And how would you characterise the differences between New Hampshire and Iowa? The, The demographic is slightly different. Uh, Yes, it is. I mean, uh, New Hampshire is uh, traditionally considered uh, a friendlier state uh, for less purist conservative candidates, which is why Nikki uh, Haley, after she placed third in Iowa, even then was saying, well, it's a two horse race now and was confident that New Hampshire, she claimed she was confident, uh, that New Hampshire was going to turn things around uh, for her. Uh, The Trump campaign relentlessly has turned its firepower on her in the days since Iowa. Uh, Former President Donald Trump hitting her uh, with uh, an assault uh, of campaign advertisements with a relentless email attack branding her as a a globalist, a woman who's going to raise your taxes, uh, something that people in New Hampshire where the state motto is live free or die very much oppose Uh, someone who represents as Ron DeSantis was saying in that farewell video corporatist globalism uh, of the old guard as he characterized it Uh, there's no indication that Nikki Haley in the hours ahead is going to be able to overturn the deficit that she faces in New Hampshire and it may well be that her political obituary at least as far as this presidential cycle uh, is concerned gets uh, etched in granite in the granite state. Simon thank Thank you very much indeed. That was Simon Marks in Washington.